The EMAG, otherwise known as the Cryptographic Sequencer, is an 8 telecrystal purchase under the Utility tab. Business card of the Syndicate. This sequencer is able to break open airlocks and tamper with a variety of station devices, recharges automatically. Cost 8 telecrystals again, and it can be purchased by nuclear operatives and Syndicate agents. Once you purchase it, it will be placed in your hand, and it looks like a hacked ID card. If you shift click it, it will say there are three charges remaining, the all-in-one hacking solution, the thinking man's lockpick, the iconic EMAG. It is at maximum charges. So the most simple use of the EMAG is that it can hack open any ID locked door, locker, you name it. So this is the captain's locker. Obviously I can't open it. I don't even have an ID. If I just left click it with the EMAG, there's, the only sound that it makes for the locker is it unlocking and it will take a charge. Every 90 seconds, you'll get a charge back, so theoretically you could hack every single door in the station if enough time passed, but obviously that's unreasonable. But what it does is it makes it so that it completely breaks the accesses on this locker. That means anyone, even with no ID, can open it and it can't be locked again. This also works on airlocks. This is a captain's airlock by emag it open. What it does is it destroys all the accesses on the door, it opens it, and it bolts it open. So... In order to fix the accesses on this door, it must be dismantled, and then a CE or a HOP can reconfigure the access, but yet again, a little out of scope. Either way, all you need to know is that the EMAG will open up a door and keep it open until somebody fixes it. So if you're using this on a door to space, uh, be very careful, because you will keep the door open and you may kill yourself with it. The EMAG has many, many other uses. The EMAG is also a small object, meaning that you can put it in a pocket, you can put it in a backpack, you can put it in a storage implant. Uh, there's a lot of ways to hide an EMAG due to its small size. You can use an EMAG to hack things like booze dispensers and soda dispensers. The left is a normal soda dispenser, and the right is an EMAG soda dispenser. The difference is here is that an EMAG soda dispenser can, deprint, can dispense ephedrine directly, 14 loco, and histamine. Histamine is probably the more important one here, or ephedrine. But uh, 14 loco is not hard to make, so you don't really save much here. Click on the left. The left is an EMAG booze dispenser, and the right is non. It gives you interesting options like iron. Iron can be used to heal yourself directly if you have blood loss. Also, it can dispense ethanol directly and atomic bomb. Um, atomic bomb, it does do uh, radiation damage, but it's pretty hard to really make much use out of this. People will probably notice it because I'll tell them that it tastes like radiation or if you don't mix it too well, it literally is a nuclear reactor sprite, so it's uh, pretty obvious. On the left, we have a hacked chemical dispenser, and the major differences here is you get things like toxin directly, ultravasculin, and epinephrine. So, if anything, epinephrine's arguably more useful for uh, non-intags, but you also get things like napalm and Napalm and Toxin definitely have some interesting capabilities here. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It's definitely up to you to figure out how to make use of this. Emagging the common vendors doesn't have too much of a benefit. Uh, Emagging robust soft drinks machines gives you two blood bread brew cans, which do have stimulants in them, but it also is atomic. Uh, it's also the atomic drink, which uh, does damage to you, so you got to be careful with that. Funnily enough, Emagging to get more chocolate core gives you three Cindy cakes. Again, that's just for fun. Emagging a Solar's Best Hot Drinks gives you two cups of nothing, and nothing does pretty much nothing. <laughs> and Emagging a Shady Sigs gives you a pack of Interdine Herbals Packet, which they are, that is actually a two telecrystal purchase, so uh, if you Emag one or two of these, you can basically get your TC back in healing smokes. Again, uh, the smokes aren't all that useful on their own. So a hacked Autodrobe gives you the sexy clown mask and mime mask, but it also gives you a samurai armor. Uh, it's not amazing armor, but it, it's something for uh, adding on to the EMAG's value. The Chem Bender gets one bottle of Toxin. The Happy Honk Dispenser gets a Woeful Kloon Meal and a Robust Nuki Meal. Um, I don't know if anything's ever that exciting in these other than gag items. I think the Robust Nuki Meal can sometimes, like, one in a million or something can have a C4, so don't really gamble on that. The Lodrobe has a Cyber Sun Pen in it, ironically enough. The Janny Drobe has janitorial maid outfits and one with a mini skirt. The Mega Seed Servitor gives you one packet of fly amanita spores. The Munkin Donuts comes with one poison donut. The Piety Ven has probably the most. It comes with Scarce, the Necronomicon, a free Necronomicon, so you can summon a uh, Cerberus and an Acolyte Armor. Acolyte Armor is incredibly powerful. It is identical to the Captain's Armor, so you are basically taking 50% reduced damage almost all combat damage, piercing is only 40, and uh, no explosive, and but it does slow you 
but it looks very cool, and I, most people don't really care if you wear this on LRP. MRP is probably different. Uh, the sustenance vendor, which I don't even know if is mapped anywhere, uh, gives you kitchen knives, space pens, breath mask, oxygen tanks, and blood red brew cans. Basically, you can break out a perma with it. The U-Tool gives you one pair of insulated gloves, which could be very useful. The Winter Drobe is also, again, just cosmetic stuff. A E-Magd Auto Lathe gives you access to bullets. And if you have the Security Tech, it will actually give you access to the Security Tech bullets. So you can get incendiary ammo for a gun if you uh, have a gun that shoots this. So like if you buy like a Viper, you can essentially put incendiary bullets into it, which is incredibly strong. And the Protolate is probably one of the strongest things to EMAG, period, especially if you're science, because it lets you make things that is normally exclusive to the security tech. So you can't make uh, you can't make stun batons, but if you were to research like the advanced laser pistol, so a scientist who researches security tech, EMAG's a Protolate, you can now make a taser if you finish that, which is a one-shot stun, or you can make free frag grenades as long as you have the materials. The explosive payload is basically the same as the Syndicate frag grenade. Or you can make, I mean, you can see the options. You can make basically the Captain's laser pistol, which is fairly cheap for what it is. Or you can even make things like the X-ray cannon, which has very, very uh, hard to heal damage types. And yeah, I mean, you get the picture here. You can make, you can make infinite TC of weapons as long as you have the materials. Uh, before you emag the protolate, though, I would definitely make sure you have the materials to make it that way. Uh, that way, you make it less obvious that you uh, emagged it. Also, uh, you could just take apart the protolate once you're done with this, so you can hide the evidence that you ever emagged it. So once you make your taser, once you make your grenades, once you make your guns, take it apart. That way, no one will be the wiser. You can also emag things like disposal units, which makes it so when you enter them, it will make it so there's no sound when you flush it. But I guess with the noose uh, taking damage upon every corner you hit in disposals, it's not quite as quiet as it used to be. And finally, one of the most powerful things you could do with an emag is emag a recycler. And if you touch it, it will instigib anyone who touches it. Uh, kind of crazy powerful. Emagging medibots is supposed to make it so that they inject you with chlorohydrate, but uh, doesn't seem to be working at the moment. Perhaps one of the most important uses of an emag is if you emag a cyborg with their panel open, make sure the panel is open. It will give them laws that state the following. Only the person who converted you and people they designate as such are syndicate agents. And then law four is you must maintain the secrecy of any syndicate activities except when doing so to conflict with the first, second, and third law. However, due to this, they can basically designate that you ignore all laws and only obey them. It's up to them. Um, also, it redoes your laws to, rather than saying crew, it specifically says syndicate agent, so you basically become their worker and you will have to do whatever they ask you to because you only obey syndicate agents and only the person who converted you and those who say they are, are syndicate agents. Also, just very quickly, I will report this. Uh, if you emag a Borg with their pay panel closed, you basically can't emag them again, even though it will still say their law governing internals are damaged. Uh, it basically it basically bricks them and makes them look like they're emag when they're actually not, so that kind of sucks for you and the Borg. And uh, also, just make sure that once you emag them, you close the panel, so no one knows their laws are tampered with, with at a quick glance. Emagging a cryopod means you can't get them out through normal me methods. It says the ejection mechanism is unresponsive. So the only other way to get them out at this point is if you... Uh, you will have to crowbar them out and it takes time. So you can basically use this as a prison for people and they require external help. You can emag accesses on things like plasma canisters. You can emag APCs to also remove access from them, making it so anyone can toggle them on and off. You can emag fire alarms to break them. So as you can see, I can toggle it on and off, but if I emag it, it stops working entirely. And however, it does not stop them from closing automatically anyways. You can hack the comms console to be able to set the alerts to whatever you want and announce wherever you want. You can even call the shuttle. The emergency shuttle has been called. You can emag a pinpointer to turn into a universal pinpointer. So what you do now is you just left click on the object that you want to track. And as you can see, the pinpointer is locating the nuke now. So this is really, really useful for nuclear operatives to not lose their bomb. And this one's probably obvious, but you could use it to emag things open, like SMG crates. I don't think there's any other emag interactions that I'm missing at the moment. I think I covered them all. Uh, if I missed any, 
feel free to just comment. Uh, this is still pretty extensive. And the reason why I'm even making this video is that there's people who just are unaware that the EMAG even has any capabilities outside of hacking doors, or maybe not even aware of that. And uh, yeah, anyways, it still shows off the most important parts of the EMAG. Thank you for watching.